So I visited my dad's grave, right? No softball there. That's good. But then I started to think, you know, what would I do if there was a softball there again? I'd probably continue to throw them, but I, things got complex for me because I have a daughter, and she was only like two and a half when my dad died, or three. I don't know. It all kind of blends together. But uh, when, he, when he died, she would ask me things like, so grandpa's in heaven. When do we get to go visit? Because kids are dumb. Uh, you don't know what it's like when you have to try and explain death to a little kid and you can't use all of the poetic things that we normally do to like sidestep the actual details. You can't just be like, oh, he went to heaven, or he's gone to a better place, because she's like, I, can't we just go there? I mean, it sounds good. Uh, so I had to be like, no, sweetie, like, grandpa's dead. We're going to put him in the ground, otherwise he'll begin to smell. It's just, uh, I mean... She's like, well, that makes me feel sad. I'm like, I got, got that kind of right there in that moment because I'm just like, oh, we're not supposed to feel sad. Um, so I had to go to therapy to learn how to mourn so that I could model it for my child. Because like, when I think about those softballs on the ground, I'm like angry about it. I'm like, why am I so mad? Why am I so sensitive? Right? Well, because Tyson's sensitive. Or at least that's what I heard. I was like six or seven, and I heard it said about me. It was like either my mom or my teacher, some sort of parent-teacher conference. It was like, oh, he's sensitive. It was kind of said with like the subtext of like, so watch out. <laughs> um, and I remember hearing it, and I was like, don't fucking say that out loud. I don't want the other kids to hear that. It's like, I'm just kind of like a, a doughy, like, I'm, I'm a pile of dough shaped like a child. So, like, if the other kids could find out that, oh, I'm sensitive, and all they have to do is just, like, make fun of me until I cry at recess, that means that I also get to get my ass kicked. Because that's what you would do with boys, is if they show weakness, you beat them up until they're not weak anymore. So I got beat up a bunch. And I didn't want to get beat up anymore, but like I was also kind of looking around because, like, you know, what does that mean? It's like, oh, he's sensitive. Like, what are the emotions that men are allowed to have? So, like, first off, like, real easy one, anger. And uh, uh, rough housing. They can you have rough housing, and they're allowed to feel drunk and. Uh, I didn't know this way at the time when I was a child, but I also found out that like the final emotion that men can have is coming. Um, now, I know those last three are not actual emotions. They're just facsimiles of emotions. But like sometimes how, how you're raised is, well, you can't really have real like affection towards other people or attachments. That can be a weakness. Uh, you don't really want to show fear that might get used against you. You definitely don't want to be sad. But I was born with all of those emotions and I didn't know what to do with them. So I was constantly like looking and like, geez, I just I would really like to not have these. So I was like, man, I'm, I'm looking at like my male role models or like the archetypes and things that I'm like trying to look up to. So like Batman. Right? I can, like, I'm like eight years old. I can uh, identify with Batman, right? He's like, Bruce Wayne's eight years old when that story starts. And his parents are killed in front of him. And the emotion that he is allowed to have is vengeance. And that's it. Like, it drives the rest of his life and it makes him into a paragon of masculinity, right? Because he's really fucking capable and he's super tough. And what else does he do with his life? He isolates himself from any type of relationships because 
well, if they find out that I'm in love with someone, it might be used against me. So I'm like, okay. Batman's cool. Um, and I looked at my dad. And my dad, like I said, he was a man's man. And like, when his dad died, when my grandpa died, I'm sitting next to my dad at the funeral, and I'm looking at him, because I'm like, I'm little, I don't really know how to process all this, because like, how to mourn wasn't really being like, shown to me. I'm looking at my dad, and he cried one tear. It made it to this part on his cheek, and then evaporated. <laughs> like, he didn't even have to wipe it off. He's like, mm, no, I'm, just, I'm too much of a man, just this one thing's going to leak out. Uh, it's just... I never once saw him have anything like fear or sadness or hurt. Like he drove a nail through his hand and he ripped it out with like a pry bar and then duct taped it shut and then finished the job. So he's an electrician and it's just like, okay. How do I be that? Because I'm tired of feeling fear and sadness and all these other things that I'm not supposed to feel. All the girl emotions, they're not so fun. I don't want them. I just, I would really like to be a man. How, do, can, I, how can I be a man? Please show me how to be a man. But he wasn't around to be a man, and that's, I think that's why I was so fucking pissed at him. So what happened was, so I'm getting a little older, and the volume on my emotions has turned to max, I'm trying to find any way to, be, to like become a man and like get, be done with this shit. And I go to confirmation class. It's catechism class. And I go into a dark church and there was one light on there. And my vicar's there and it's, just, it's all boys. It's on a Wednesday night. It's another dark room with a single light on. Go in there. And my vicar, Vicar Cook, he says, boys... If you go through catechism class and you learn this, you will become a man in the church. And I was like, finally. There's some sort of method in which I can become a man. Awesome. I'm just, I'm just going to do, do this work really well. And, you know, I'm like 13. And through the next couple years of catechism class, like I finally hit puberty. So I finally started to grow a little bit. But I also... Went through other changes. And one of those other changes is like when I first started getting a little, you know, the hints of depression. It was like, okay, the volume's already turned up on, on your emotions, but we're just going to give you 11 and 12, and we're going to max those out too. So that's when I started first having like, you know, those darker thoughts, like the suicidal ideation. But I had this really good guidebook on how to be a man. And then when you think about the Bible, there's basically two kind of archetypes on how to be a man. There's the first one, which is like, be it the champion and like subjugate everything and like, like rule your home and defend against everything else and like, you know, that kind of fuckwad. Um, just, and I knew I couldn't be that. I knew I couldn't be that because like all I ever did was get my ass kicked at, at recess. Like no one was going to listen to me. I wasn't going to be that type of man. So the other archetype of masculinity was the martyr. There's two main martyrs. There's like Job and there's John the Baptist. And I'm like, I like New Testament. So I was like, John the Baptist, he's pretty cool. So all you have to do to be a martyr is you just never complain. You just take whatever you have and you live a life of shit. And then you die and you get your heavenly reward. So I was like, okay, I'll just take everything that I got and all these thoughts, I'll just put it down here, and I'll just leave it there. And that's what I did for, until I was like 39. And then things obviously started to break down. I don't know. I kind of think of it like day drinking. All right, stay with me on this one. I know I'm running a little long. Um, then you guys like woke up on a Saturday to day drink, and you're like, let's say it's like 10 a.m. You crack your first beer, and you have like 
cook out, and then like it gets to be like dinner time, and you're like 15 beers in. But you take a break for dinner, and you eat dinner, and then you have a nice dessert afterwards. And then after you get done with the dessert, you're like, hey, I feel pretty good. I'm, I think I'm sober again. We could probably drive somewhere and go do something else. But you're not sober. You've just gotten used to the feeling of being drunk. That's kind of what it's like when you just bury your emotions. It works. You just get used to feeling that way, and you get a little detached. But I found out when I went to therapy that there are other emotions besides anger, and that I was actually kind of hurt that my dad didn't spend some time with me. And I started like learning how to do these things and process stuff, Amy, and like, It was important because I needed to show my daughter how to mourn, but I needed to show her how to have emotions. So my daughter, I mean, years have passed, and like last year, the first day of school, I drop her off, and it's the first day of fourth grade, and I'm, I'm watching her. I'm there with her mom, and... Uh, I'm watching my daughter with her friends and interacting with them, and she's, like, capable, and she's fun, and she, and she brightens people's lives. She's such a good person. I mean, I love her, and I'm biased, but she's fucking awesome. And I just, I wanted to reach out to my ex-wife, and I wanted to, like, grab her hand and squeeze it and just be like, and I, I wanted to say to her, I'm like, she's the best thing we've ever done. And I heard it in my mind and I heard my dad's voice say you're the best thing I've ever done and it wasn't until that point when I finally fucking put it together my dad really did love me he was just raised in this method of like being too afraid to like show this stuff to his kid because he didn't want me to grow up soft because that's what he was taught He had all of those emotions. We weren't that different. He just didn't have the opportunity to learn how to have those other emotions. I'm still working on it. Today, at work, one of my friends at work, like he's going through a tough time. And like when I saw him today, I was like, you know what would be a really cool emotional, like, neat thing to do is like, I would love to go up and give him a hug and say, I know yesterday was tough. It's all right. But I didn't do that. We looked at each other and we did. (laughs) And that's supposed to communicate all that. Um, I don't know if I found another softball on my dad's grave. I can kind of think about it, like the weight in my hand. Yeah, I'd still throw it. That's my time.